Welcome to my studio. Thanks for dropping by. Today, I will be sharing with you my techniques and processes of completing this realistic links. So the first thing I do with any project is to decide the paper and supplies I will use. I knew I wanted to do a pastel background and colored pencil subject. So my next choice was for the paper. This is key because even the color will affect the final outcome of your piece. So I ultimately chose pastel mat as my paper because it plays well with both my chosen mediums and I knew I could continuously layer on this paper with my colored pencils. The second would be the color. I chose sienna because I wanted the glow from it to shine through the layers of the pencil and pastel. I could have chosen any color from the brown to the gray to the green, but ultimately decided that the sienna would give me the look I was going for. I then put masking film over my subject to keep those areas free from pastel and give me a nice crisp edge to work with on the subject. After all of that was set, I began on the background. Using pan pastels, I layered the various colors I wanted for the background and blended them a bit. As you can see, I tried a couple of different things in the background and eventually settled on the bouquet background. Now, I don't do bouquet very often, so it was a bit of a learning curve for me. As you can see, I had entirely too many circles in the background and it just took over. The nice thing about pastels and pastel mat was I could just blend it in and start again without any problems. Now, I wouldn't call those first couple of attempts a failure as it did help me figure out not only what I wanted in the background, but how to use my tools to achieve it. I used a round makeup sponge similar to the feel of the soft tool sponges to create the circle and it worked really well. I was able to layer them on top of the existing pastels in a perfect circle. I also added more pastel to the background to adjust the various values to not only create the depth, but make the circle stand out a bit as well. Now, I had to use much restraint on those circles so I didn't overdo it like I did the first time. And I think the background actually turned out very well. Once I was happy with that, I removed the masking film and began to work on the links. If you're enjoying this video and are new to the channel, consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification so you don't miss out on any future tips, tutorials, and live streams. Now, I would love to say that it was smooth sailing from there, but it was not. Yes, I chose the colors to work on my links beforehand, but until I started working on it, I didn't really realize how many different colors are in such a small area? I first put the whiskers in. There are a couple reasons for this. The first is so I had a map once I got to the areas for the markings. And the second is to keep the whiskers a vibrant white. Working around the whiskers, you will inevitably get color over it. But it is easy to go back over it with the white to bring them back or scratch the top of the layer of the color to reveal the white and again go over it again to brighten it up. Once I started on the lynx fur, notice I started in the far left side. This is my norm for a few reasons. First, I am right-handed, so it helps to keep from smudging already completed areas of your work. Granted, I had the background completed already, but I did use glassine to ensure I didn't smudge that either. Second, I take this opportunity to try different color combinations and techniques to get the appearance I want and the values correct. Since it is on the side, it is easy to hide those adjustments and changes because the viewer focuses in on the face or center of the drawing and typically don't analyze the edges too much. And some of it gets hidden when you frame and mat it anyway. I quickly learned I was going to have to completely change my approach and working method I would usually take with such a subject. In most areas, I actually put the hairs in as I built the fur because of the various colors, instead of blocking in a base color. I tried that and it just wasn't turning out well or gave the look that I wanted. So I switched gears a bit and was much happier with the outcome. I also would work in the negative when there was quite a bit of white, meaning I would put the white in first and then put in the shadows or additional colors in between or that would be behind the white separating the hairs. While it seems like it would take more time, and trust me, it felt like it did. The entire piece only took me 19 and a half hours, including the background. 
And this piece wasn't exactly small either. It measured 15 and a half inches wide and 12 inches tall. While it isn't gigantic, it is a far cry from eight by 10. So as I completed the body, there were a couple of times I just wanted to stop and give up. But I liked the background so much that I kept moving forward. I wanted so badly to get to the face, but used that as a motivation and reward for finishing the body. Once I did finish the body, I moved on to the first ear. So with this ear, I was figuring out the best way to layer the colors for the fur while still maintaining that bright white. As you can see, I worked on a lot of the negative here as well and found that putting in the lighter fur and then tinting it worked the best. I moved along the ear using various strokes and stroke lengths in order to get the realistic looking fur. It is very important throughout the entire piece of drawing fur to not only get the values correct, but also the length and direction of the fur in each individual area. This can really be seen around the face with the very long hairs and then the shorter hairs around the rest of the face, but long in front of the ears. Paying attention to these details is what really sets you up for success in an animal portrait like this. You'll see me also create various markings on the animal. Keep in mind, they don't have to be exact just close. No one is looking at the reference when they see your art, so don't fret if it isn't exactly the same shape. As long as it is close, then it will be successful. I moved on to the eye and found it to be a bit more challenging than most, interestingly enough. I think part of it is because the shadow that is in there isn't like a shadow in other animal portraits I have done. It's like the light shines through the eye, reflects off the pupil, and brightens it up a bit. So it was a little tricky getting that look, but with a bit of work and rework, I think it ended up working out and being successful in the end. I continued the same process for the other side of the face and ear and left the snout, nose, and mouth for last. Reasoning for this, it is the closest part to the viewer and in the foreground. Secondly, it is part of the widest area and I wanted to really preserve that white and take my time on the mouth. This is another area that close attention must be paid to, not only in length, but direction of fur. There are places it goes every which way and even places on his nose in the transition from between his eyes to the snout where the fur is actually coming straight to the viewer almost raised a bit. That was quite a bit of dots and I have a newfound respect for pointillism. I don't know that I could ever do an entire piece like that. Just that small area about drove me mad. Can you imagine doing that for an entire piece? Wow. Have you ever done a piece of art and had a realization or a newfound respect for either the artist, art style, or medium? I would love to hear your experience in the comments below. Once I got to the front where there was a bunch of white, I then sort of went back to my usual method and put in a base of white first. Since there were not a lot of variations to the fur in such a tiny area, it was much easier to do that here. I then put in some details and went back over with the white and toned it with various grays, blues, browns, and blacks. Once my final layer was close to being completed, I again worked in the negative and created a bit more depth to the fur. After most of that was in, I took another hour or so tweaking the various areas, making adjustments to the values, and adding more details and markings. I probably could have gone a bit longer doing that, but I was happy with it and just finally said, that's it. Sometimes knowing when to stop is the biggest challenge and there came a point where I said, that's it, I'm happy with it, stop touching it. I'm Wendy O'Brien, thanks for watching and until next time, keep on arting.